Welcome to my channel. I am going to walk you through the process of valuing three IT service stocks and analyzing their financial ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. Become a member of the channel and I can do a more in-depth valuation on the ticker of your choice. The first company we're going to look at is Gartner. This is a research and advisory firm providing information, advice, and tools for leaders in IT, finance, HR, legal, marketing, and many more areas. Its client base consists of over 15,000 organizations in 100 countries. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $11.9 billion, so they're a large cap company. Large cap companies have over 10 billion market cap. They're trading at 126 a share, and to get the shares outstanding, it's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding 94 million. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows, and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. When a company has positive free cash flow, that means they're generating more cash than they're spending. You usually want to invest in a company with positive free cash flow, although a company can have negative free cash flow if they're investing in their business to hopefully grow it later on. But this company does have positive free cash flow. It's pretty consistent. It does drop in 2017, but it looks pretty good each year. The net income also looks good. Although it drops a lot in 2017, they must have had some non-cash items they passed through that year. And their revenue looks really good. It's growing each year. Their margins are pretty good, a little low, under 10%. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $2.2 billion of debt. They pay 4.7% interest on their debt. And cost of debt is 4%. To get cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And they have 70% of debt in their capital structure, so they're a bit leveraged. That means they have 30% equity, and the cost of equity is 13.5%. And we figure that out using the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And that beta is 1.45, so the stock moves about one and a half times the market. We use the capital asset pricing model to figure out the cost of equity. And their WAC is 6.8%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 5.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $6.3 billion. We divide that by 94 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of $67. They're trading at 126, so they're trading at an 88% premium. It's a strong sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. Almost exactly what I'm saying, they're at $68. That's pretty interesting, we're so close. So they're also saying the stock is way overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So the stock has been up and down in price. It looks like it peaked in the 170s and fell below 100 recently. So I'm not sure if it's a good value, at least not according to my model. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a bad PE. The average in the market is 18.8. The median is 16.4. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15 PE, they're at 51, so investors are paying $51 for $1 of earnings. They have a decent price to sales ratio. The median is 1.8, the average is 5.1. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 2.8, so investors are paying $2.80 for $1 of revenue. They don't have a good price to book. The median in the market is 2.4. The average is 4.9. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5. They're at 12.7. So investors are paying $12.70 for $1 book value. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. They have a good interest coverage ratio. The average in the market is 13.1. The median is 4.0. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0. They're at 3.7, so they can cover their interest payments. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes, also called operating income on the income statement. 
ROE is good. The median is 12%, the average is 14%. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 25%. So they provide good value to the equity holders. They don't have a good current ratio. The median is 1.3, the average is 1.8. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2. They're at 0.7. So they cannot cover their current debts and payables, which means they may need to take on more debt. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Accenture, Broadridge, Fleetcore, IBM, Lados, Sabre, Science Applications, Teradata, Ypro, and Xerox, all in the same industry as Gartner. And if Gartner has a number in red, they're worse than the average. They have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they all worse in price to earnings, price to sales, price to book, current ratio, they're better in ROE at 25%, the average is 22%. They're worse in debt, they're at 70%, the average is 51%. They're lower market cap at 11.9 billion. They're not a small company, this industry has some big companies in it. And they don't pay a dividend, so they're obviously lower in average dividend yield. The average is 1.64%. So to summarize, I have them trading at an 88% premium. Their ratios look terrible and their financials are decent. The second company we're gonna look at is Lados, formerly known as Science Applications. And this is an American defense, aviation, IT, and biomedical research company. Lados merged with Lockheed Martin's IT sector in August 2016 to create the defense industry's largest IT service provider. In January 2020, Lados purchased defense contractor Dynetics for approximately $1.65 billion. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $12.8 billion. They're trading at 88 a share, and they have 145 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow, net income, and revenue seems to be growing each year, so their financials look really strong. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $3 billion of debt. They pay 4.9% interest on their debt, and cost of debt is 3.8%. The weight of debt is 47% which means they have 53% equity in a capital structure. The beta is 1.11, so the stock moves a little more than the market. It's not too volatile. And the cost of equity is 10.8%, and we use the capital asset pricing model to figure that out. The WAC is 7.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows we also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 15 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $14.4 billion. We divide that by 145 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of $99. They're trading at $88, so they're trading at 11% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them valued at 112, so they're saying the stock is even more undervalued than I am. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it seems like the stock has been on a steady incline for about four years. It did drop a little bit. It's come back up and it's sitting at a good number. I think it has room to grow. Let's look at our financials. They have a decent PE, that stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 19.2. They have a good price to sales ratio, that stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.2. They have a good price to book, that stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 3.8. Good interest coverage ratio, that's EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 5.8. ROE is good, that's net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 20%. They have a good current ratio, that's current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 1.2. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of Accenture, Broadridge, Fleetcore, IBM, Gartner, Sabre, Science Applications, Teradata, Ypro, and Xerox, all in the same industry as Lados. And if Lados has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they are worse in PE, but they're better in price to sales and price to book. They're doing fine in current ratio. They're a little worse than average in ROE. They're a little better than average in debt. They're smaller than average company at 12.8 billion market cap. And the dividend yield is a little less than average. Average is 1.64, they're at 1.51. But a lot of companies aren't even paying a dividend. 
To summarize, I have them trading at 11% discount. Their ratios look about average, but their financials look solid. The last company we're going to look at is Sabre. This is the largest global systems provider for air bookings in North America. American Airlines founded the company in 1960 and it was spun off in 2000. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $2.2 billion, so they're a mid cap company. They're trading at $6.31 a share. And their financials look pretty good. Free cash flow looks consistent and growing. Net income looks good. It does drop in 2019, but it's still positive and fairly healthy each year. And their revenue seems to be increasing, although little, but it does increase each year. They have $3.3 billion of debt. They pay 4.7% interest on their debt. Cost of debt is 3.85%. They have a lot of debt in that capital structure, 78% debt, which means they have 22% equity. Cost of equity is 15.3% and their beta is 1.7%. So the stock is a bit volatile. And their WAC is 6.36%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 4.6 billion. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $5.4 billion. We divide that by 349 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of 1555. They're trading at 631, so they're trading at a 59% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them valued at $23, even higher than me, so they're saying the stock is really undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So the stock has been trading well over $20 for many years. Then once coronavirus came, it dropped like a rock and it hasn't come back up. So this seems like a really undervalued stock with lots of room to grow. Let's look at our financial ratios. Really good PE, that stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, that 13.9. Good price of sales, that stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, there are 0.6. Good price to book, that stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, there are 2.3. Good interest coverage ratio, that's EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, there are 2.3. A decent ROE, that's net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, there are 17%. Good current ratio, that's current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and two, but 1.1 is fine. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Accenture, Broadridge, Fleetcore, IBM, Gartner, Latos, Science Applications, Teradata, Ypro, and Xerox, all in the same industry as Sabre. And Sabre has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they are worse in PE, much better in price to sales and price to book. They're doing okay in current ratio, a little worse in ROE, a lot worse in debt, they're 78%, average is 51%. Market cap, they're below average, and they don't pay a dividend. To summarize, I've been trading at a 59% discount. Their ratios look good, and their financials look pretty solid. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I reply to all comments. Subscribe if you wanna see me value more companies, and become a member if you want me to do a more in-depth analysis on the ticker of your choice. Thanks for watching.